right, you guys have asked for it and we finally got our hands on one. Uh, this is a giant scale airplane and my gosh, this box is just huge. Uh, kind of a neat plane, made by E-Flight. Been around for a little bit, but uh, you know, I wanted to get one and you guys wanted me to review one, so let's get into this box. Alright, so here we have it. This is the uh, Cessna uh, Carbon Z uh, by E-Flight. Um, this is a giant scale plane, as you can see. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to, to get this thing together. Um, huge, huge airframe, oh my gosh. So, let's get into this box and see what we're all about here. This thing's gigantic, I mean, it's almost hard to work with. So the reason I went ahead, you know what? Let's just uh, pop both ends here. The reason I went ahead and bought this plane is I'm actually after my actual pilot's license right now. And the first plane I want to buy is a Cessna 150. Uh, Cessna 150, pretty amazing plane. Um, I would say arguably, from the Cessna line of airplanes, the most successful trainer. Um, you know, a lot of them are about 80, 80, 90 years old, 80 years old, 80 years old, and they're still in the air. And uh, that speaks volumes to this. Uh, they uh, stopped making these, I think, actual planes in 1983. Uh, tried to take and bring along, I think it was a Cessna 164, if I'm right, 163. Um, I mean, like a hundred other things. and. Uh, discontinued the line because it just wasn't as popular, well received, or as good of a trainer as forgiving as the 150. Now, <clears throat> I'm not looking at this as a trainer, but uh, I've always loved the civilian uh, aircraft uh, for RC. And uh, well, when I saw this, I wanted it, but there's a trick. Hey, it's gigantic. <laughs> so you gotta, you know, transport, storage, logistics problems there. But it's also expensive. This is a uh, $379 plane on sale. On sale. Uh, regularly, it's, uh, I think, $430. And, uh, you know, that's that's not chunk change. That's not a small amount of money for a single plane. <laughs> Would you look at this? That's gotta be the uh, the carbon fiber spar for the, uh, the wings. That thing is just ridiculously huge. <laughs> Oh my, kind of fun. So uh, yeah, giant. Uh, it's got, I believe, a uh, Power 50 uh, motor in it. Now this thing runs some interesting <coughs> um, uh, options with regards to, to batteries. Pull this prop out. So this is a 15 by seven prop. Gigantic prop, beautiful prop. And uh, connected to that Power 50, and it will run anything from a 4S to a 6S, and it kind of wants to be somewhere in the neighborhood of between a 4 and a 6,000 uh, milliamp battery in those ranges. So uh, obviously that's going to impact CG. I'm betting a, a fair amount. Uh, looks like we've got oh, just some kind of swag decals. I haven't seen that in a lot of planes lately. That's kind of nice. Um, all right, let's uh, finish with the uh, foam supports there. Those are gone. Um, all right, well, shoot. Uh, we've actually got some great big zip ties holding parts in here, so we'll have to see if this little razor will cut it or if I've got to find something a little meatier. But that won't stop us on our, our fun here. All right, let's pull out a wing half. Uh, you know, before I do, just give everyone a, a peek of what's inside the box. <laughs> Pretty exciting. All right, so a uh, beautiful civilian scale air uh, aircraft airplane. Um, has a lot of kind of nice things going for it. So the details are beautiful. Uh, the foam's actually really nice on this uh, plane. Very little crocodiling. Um, we've got... Oh, nice little separator there, even for our split flaps. Very nice. 
mechanical wing supports are in, uh, full flaps, beautiful, gigantic control surface for the aileron there. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, of this, which is the, uh, the hot plug and play kind of quick connect setup um, for the, uh, the, the wings here. And we've got our, our marker lights, which is nice at the wingtips. Uh, the, uh, uh, what is it? The Cherokee. Cherokee's got the same kind of setup. I tell you, you get out to the runway and, and click, click, and you're off flying. You're not having to spend a lot of time with wiring and send, sending up your plane. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Um, just a beautiful wing overall, though. Details on that are fantastic. Let's go ahead and pull that out. Looks like the next thing that wants to come out, we usually have at the end, is uh, the fuselage. Oh my gosh, this thing is gigantic. Would you look at this, huh? Looks like our, our top came off. Now that's interesting. Uh, there's a little clip, but mine does not seem to clip. The uh, plastic's not lined up well, so uh, we'll have to check that out. Uh, very simple wiring internally, huge compartment for our, uh, our radio, so that's nice to see. Again, beautiful details all over this plane. And uh, looks like we have a front cowl that opens and comes off as well. Uh, a battery access in there, and it looks like we're uh, we're using uh, boy EC5 connector, giant connector uh, on this. And uh, up here in the very front is our 60 amp ESC, so that you know gives us a little range with uh, the battery. Now, kind of interesting. This thing's purported uh, capable of, of some aerobatic stuff too. Uh, Kind of exciting. Motor is not installed. And uh, yeah, just overall, good looking plane. Looks like our rudder is not installed either. So we'll have to see where that's hiding out. All right, let's see if we can, we can find a spot to put this sucker. There we go. All right, diving in, we've got more of this protective foam. And uh, I see a manual. Love the E-Flight manuals, there's, there's always just Clear details, they're always well made. Definitely one of the, the benefits of a, an e-flight plane. Um, boy, we got a bigger piece of foam here to come out. Just unceremoniously throw it away. There's our other wing. Other wing half. And uh, they've got that protective foam in there, nice. Good condition, don't see any problems with it. Got our green LED on this side. This thing's so big. All right, next up, let's see if we can liberate some parts. Uh, or we've got an elevator here. Beautiful. Uh, so, no mechanical hinges. For that price tag, I'm really surprised. We do have what looks to be those little plastic film hinges, and there are uh, six of those in groups of three. Um, so that's kind of a surprise. Uh, looks like we've got some plastic fittings on here. Uh, looks like a little bit of a skid plate there. That's nice. Uh, dragging the tail there. We don't want to scuff it up too bad. There's the other half of our, uh, our elevator. Um, all right. Diving in here further. Oh, we've got a nose cowl. That's nice. And uh, we've got LEDs embedded in there. Those are giant LEDs. So. Uh, I'm wondering if that puts out a decent amount of light. Kind of fun. Um, I see our rudder down here. And oh, we can actually see there are those plastic hinges I was talking about, the film hinges. I still would have liked to have seen something mechanical. Um, you know, a little ball link action here. Uh, some of the things we see on, you know, comparable planes price wise. Um, especially when we start looking at the motion RC uh, kind of you know line of planes uh, free wing Love to see um, Some of those you know basics that they have not seeing it here. Eh, it's neither here nor there But you know one of those things we always keep kind of tabs on the uh, on the industry We're always looking at who's doing what you know and all that of course affects the price of the plane the competitiveness of the, the market 
And being that we really gauge the value of a plane by the number of flights you get off of it, um, you know, durability is a huge factor for us. So we're, we're, we're always looking at that. All right, I'm going to try and cut through these zip ties here. See if I can do this safely. A little exacto blade isn't always the best choice. All right. And here we've got a packet of small carbon fiber rods. We've got some push, push rods and our wing supports. Beautiful wing supports. Rounded, nice oval shape, beautiful plastic connectors on the ends. Again, great quality there. Just wanted to see it all the way around the plane. Um, oh, wow. Let's pop this off. Now it's kind of funny. <clears throat> we have these, uh, these nice little pods covering our, uh, our gears here. And uh, the more and more I dive into the real deal, uh, as I've been actually looking at buying one of these, uh, it's funny, you never see these. Now people will say, oh hey, yeah, I've, I've got these. Uh, and uh, you know, they're sitting in a shed somewhere, I'll, I'll sell them to you with the plane. Nobody runs their planes with these on. I've always found that to be interesting. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why, but that really seems to be a very consistent theme. At any rate, holy cow, uh, this is eighth inch thick uh, steel um, for this, uh, this uh, support arm coming out. Little bit of flex to it. Um, giant mechanical axle going through this thing. So <laughs> that's a year and a half. Not only that, but it, uh, it'll take a heck of a beating it looks like. Uh, let's go ahead and set that guy aside. And well, we found its, its mate here and uh, all the condition looks good. Tires are uh, kind of a foam, uh, foam rubber. They're, uh, they're a little softer, um, which is nice. That'll, uh, that'll take some, some harder landings, take some of the, the bump out. Oh, look at you, wow. There's our nose gear, uh, the entire assembly. Now I've not seen something like this before with any model where you've got to actually install a, a full assembly. Looks like we do have shocks on it and uh, our control arm and all of our linkages are already installed on this. Um, but we do have to actually mount it. So kind of interesting, uh, something I've not seen before. A uh, little, little unusual there. Always fun to find those oddities every single plane has. You know, where they had to make concessions in engineering. Boy, parts bag full of goodies. Uh, we've got spinners, we've got extension leads, plastic brackets, screws, prop nuts, shaft adapters, lots and lots of stuff in here. And uh, yeah, let's see, what are you for? Oh, a remote bind plug. That's kind of nice. Uh, that must mean it's a little harder to get down to the radio there once this thing's built. All right, so we got one last big zip tie and it's holding in our motor. There we go. There we go. Uh, BL50, uh, this is a EFLM 7450 on the model number. It's a 525 kV motor. This thing's massive. Uh, the silicone wires are very heavy gauge on this. However, they're using the uh, 35 millimeter bullet plugs, which is kind of interesting. Uh, smaller bullet plug. The motor mount is just massive. I mean, that is that is seriously thick stuff, at least 3 16 uh, uh, piece of, of steel or aluminum there. Beautiful motor. Definitely gonna have this thing running really, really well, especially with a, a six cell on there. All right, well, I think that's it. That is all the, the goodies out of the box. Why don't we go ahead and jump into the time lapse? We'll get this sucker put together and uh, kind of share our thoughts about it and, and you know how that goes.
Alrighty folks, there you have it. This thing is absolutely gargantuan. I actually think this is the biggest plane we've put together. This may be wider in wingspan than that uh, ridiculous Mitchell we did from Banana Hobbies. Um, beautiful plane overall. A few quirks here and there we'll talk about, but uh, holy cow. I mean, this thing is just gigantic. It has presence. <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, it was a little hard to work on. That's how big this thing was. Um, so I haven't done it yet. Let's, uh, let's give this thing its uh, thrust check. Uh, a little bit of a, a uh, little excited here. I'm running a 5,000 milliamp hour six cell Gen's Ace battery with the EC5 connector on it. Uh, that way it just plugged right in on this. And uh, the radio I chose to use is an Admiral. Uh, I like that just because if I want to have the panic button available to me, I've got it. And uh, on a plane this big and frankly for the price, yeah, a little, you know, insurance policy. It's not a bad thing to have, especially if I let other flyers use this plane, which uh, I have a tendency of doing. So, uh, let's give this thing a whirl. Let's see what this thing wants to do. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, I feel like I've really got a grip on, got, get a, get a, got to get a grip on it. And I'll get a grip with that too. Okay, I'm gonna hold right here. This feels like the best place I can really wrench on. Okay, here we go, six cell power. Oh my god. Oops. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're doing half lap takeoffs, this thing's going to pop off the ground in five or ten feet probably. Holy cow, I can't believe that. That is some punch. Uh, let's give that another whirl. Wow. You know, <laughs> I really pissed off the airplanes hanging from the ceiling. Uh, if I had another person here, I'd love to throw a, a scale on this and see what it's pulling because this is more pull than I've felt in a lot of planes. I'm actually really having to hold on to this thing. Um, let's get that throttle cut on. Wow, what a beautiful plane. Um, you know, going through the plane, uh, you know, the surfaces are amazing. I love a lot of the details that they put into this plane. Um, small things like the ribbing on uh, the trailing edges here. Uh, you know, one thing that really surprised me is they actually had run an LED through that rudder and had just the wire exposed and then you got a little part that you put on and you actually get your, your tip light at the end of the uh, the rudder here. Now I've seen a, a hundred different planes made by different manufacturers where they'll put in fake LEDs or even an LED with no wiring to it. Uh, this is a really nice detail. I, 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 I got a kick out of this. The fact that our strobes actually are fading in and out as well versus just turning on and off flashing. Another small detail but really nice. Um, Overall, the, the surfaces on this thing move beautifully. You know, once we got those, uh, those hinges glued in, um, boy, there we go, there's our rudder. And we get, you know, just beautiful movement out of that. Uh, elevator, nice throw on that. And uh, we'll hit our ailerons. Lots of, lots of throw on this. So apparently this is supposed to be able to knife edge and a bunch of other things. Um, and you know, with the amount of rudder I see in this, that, that makes sense. Um, you know, the flaps on it are really nice too. Um, just gorgeous. Need to reverse that, uh, that switch, but uh, beautiful uh, flaps. That'll be fun to see how slow I can bring this in on. Now this isn't a, a lightweight plane either. This is about, oh, 10 pounds uh, before I put the battery in. So we're probably sitting around 11 pounds right now, um, which for a plane, that's, that's quite a bit. Um, you know, some things I didn't like about the plane, and it's just worth pointing out because again, this is, a, this is an expensive plane, 350-ish you know, dollars. Um, they used cheap glue, and that pisses me off. Um, I have this beautiful plane, absolutely just gorgeous to look at, but every factory glued seam 
all the glue has yellowed and I mean really yellowed um, and it really stands out it's it's a ugly element to this plane and really there's no easy way to get rid of that unless you choose to paint the entire plane from top to bottom with a white coat and then back up through your colors so yeah that's disappointing um, another problem that I have on this specific model um, is we have these struts that go up to our wings up here uh, these struts are, are really great, they're beautiful, they're strong, they're well designed, but the problem is whoever put my little uh, clip in on the factory, this guy, right down here on the fuselage, oops, sorry, right here, didn't do it right, didn't put it in at the right angle. So I can install that side, put the little pin, the clevis uh, in there, and I'm great. This side I cannot do that. Um, so, and, and there's a big gap there. Visually, it's actually a little janky, um, and I'm gonna have to do some work to fix that. Uh, not my first kind of thing that I wanna see on a plane, especially again at this price point, and especially at E-Flight quality levels. Um, you know, E-Flight's a pretty darn good company with good quality, and, and this is disappointing to see. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that really, really fought me was uh, getting all of the um, uh, linkages adjusted to the right lengths for the rudder and the, the nose steering. Um, I ended up taking and, and having to move the servo horn um, and adjust everything. The hard part is you can't easily adjust that nose wheel once you've installed it into the plane because it's kind of a weird system they've got set up. And with weird systems, you have well, lots of weird components. I think there's five different sizes of Allen screws that I had to use while I was assembling this. And honestly, it's kind of unnecessary for a plane like this. Generally, when we get into the larger and larger and larger scale of the plane, they're easier and easier to build and work on, and we use higher quality components, well, just because there's more stresses on the plane. And I didn't see that here. I saw weird engineering, uh, overabundance of component parts and, and, and uh, pieces you had to screw on and, and you know whether you're using a, a five millimeter, a two, a 2.5, a 1.5 uh, you know Allen it kind of just got tedious on the build in fact time lapse wise this is probably one of the longest builds we've ever had um, part of that is in part just because the scale of this plane is so darn big but also just there's just weird engineering decisions that were were included in this boy those servos are talky talky servos just chatting away uh, anyway so all that said you know ultimately what do I think about the plane as it sits on the bench I really like it but again I, I like civilian planes I'm buying this actual plane Cessna 150 um, so I have an emotional attachment to it already. And, you know, honestly, that sways my opinion for, for myself, uh, where other people might not have those kind of uh, desires, uh, might not have that connection with this plane. So at 100 or 350 bucks, let alone the sale price, you know, I think it was a five or four, 430, if I remember right. Uh, kind of shooting from the hip with the numbers here, but uh, compared to other planes I've seen, other prices, even when you start getting into you know some of the larger planes and scale planes for Motion RC, I don't know that I'm seeing you know this being a plane everyone's going to love. But frankly, I'm going to love it. I'm going to take it out. We're going to get its maiden in, and uh, we're going to see exactly what this thing's capable of. So there we have it. Cessna 150, the Carbon X from uh, E-Flight. Uh, beautiful plane overall. A few little quirks, but uh, if you can look beyond those, it's definitely a plane worth getting. And uh, again, you know, hopefully that maiden goes really well. We'll, uh, we'll let you guys know. And until then, keep flying.